To be perfectly honest, the following review most likely is no longer that relevant, especially considering I'm only releasing it now. But in my defense, I gotta say that I've gone through some sad events this year in my life. But enough whining around, as impressive as AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X 3D they've released in the meantime in 2022 may be, today's Intel Core i5 12400F for the majority of us turns out to be the much better choice. Even though we are only dealing with quote unquote only 6 cores and 12 threads here, from a price to performance perspective, this i5 CPU really is mind blowing and can without any doubt be considered one of Intel's best CPUs for the time being when keeping in mind budget. But that's what the pricing gets to decide at the end of the day. And while we are at it, I have to say that I went with the cheaper 12400F model. The only difference compared to the regular 12400 is the lack of integrated graphics on here on that F model. Most gamers don't even care. That kind of lookout is getting rewarded when glancing over to the pricing. The MSRP the manufacturers suggested retail pricing for the 12400F is at around 160 US dollars, whereas the iGPU creates quite the premium, roughly 185 dollars. Retail prices in May 2022 are as follows. About 160 to 180 dollars for the 12400F and 170 to 190 dollars for the regular 12400. So I know for sure which one of the two models I'm gonna pick up. But much more interesting surely has to be the question, how well the competition AMD stacks up against this? You might find a better deal there, who knows? Spoiler alert, no you don't. Intel in this very price range offers us an almost unbeatable deal. Why it is, you'll find out in this video. At this point I'd like to give a belated shout out and thank you to the kind Yorgios over at the hardware shop Equipper. He got a hold on that CPU for me fairly quickly, it's just that I had to put a hold on everything due to personal reasons. So thank you Yorgios. Hashtag not sponsored. Included with the 12400F is, just as it's the case with the i3-12100, which I've reviewed sometime earlier before, a boxed cooler, a stock cooler by Intel. Needless to say, I will conduct tests for you guys with it, especially how it compares to an AIO liquid cooler, to determine whether or not the clock speeds are affected by the used cooling solution. Maybe we get the chance to save a little extra money by simply going with the already included solution by Intel. Intel's new Alder Lake architecture, as you may know, has introduced so-called performance and efficiency cores, P and E cores for short. P cores come with the classic layout of offering two threads per core respectively, whereas E cores come equipped with just a single thread. Furthermore, E cores tend to clock significantly lower than P cores do. However, in the case of the i5-12400F, there are no such efficiency cores to spot. Six P cores is what we get on here, which is why we can expect those traditional 12 threads doing their job. Now even though it's been said a million times by now, I'd like to mention once more that Alder Lake is equipped with both a DDR4 as well as DDR5 memory controller, meaning we're amidst some sort of transitional phase allowing us to save some money by going the DDR4 route, since DDR5 in most cases barely does equal a noticeable performance uplift. Albeit, attention should be paid when picking one's motherboard, since boards can come with either DDR4 or DDR5 slots. For the sake of completeness, I've therefore gone with the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 motherboard. Unfortunately, that flagship chipset Z690 hardly makes any sense here, since the i5-12400F is a CPU with a locked multiplier. Official overclocking is not an option with it. It would make a whole lot more sense to go with a much more fitting chipset instead, such as H670, B660 or even H610 for instance. This will also drastically lower platform costs. Needless to say, the choice of memory is also way too overkill in my case. After all, I've gone with 32GB of the G-Skill Triton Z5 DDR5 
6000 MHz RAM. I did not get those full 6000 MHz up and running though. I experienced a few crashes and freezes, which is why I lowered the memory clock down to a respectable 5800 MHz. For my primary tests of the 12400F, I'll be using the Be Quiet Pure Loop 360mm AIO liquid cooler. It's part of my standard test system after all. Same applies for my graphics card, the RTX 3090, to help eliminate most of those GPU limitations, so I don't have to lower those graphics settings all across the board. At full load, all six cores clock at about 4 GHz. As a matter of fact, I'm able to read out the same exact clock speeds with the much lower performing stock cooler. A temperature problem there certainly is none, that's for sure. Intel advertises a boost or rather max turbo clock of 4.4 GHz and practically speaking I more or less achieved that. Same when I let the stock cooler do the cooling of the CPU. In game I'm reading out about 4 GHz, depending on the game title. Now before we dive into the test results I'd like to clearly point out that there were differences when it comes to the type of memory used. Older platforms were tested with DDR4 RAM, of course, there's no other option. I went with 16GB at 3200 MHz. Alder Lake, on the other hand, has been equipped with 32GB of DDR5 at effectively 5800 MHz. Furthermore, I did pay real close attention, so the actual memory capacity did not alter or influence any of my results. Now the following are my benchmarks. As they say, the best comes at the end. In the case of the i5-12400F, my humble self needs to say that this CPU currently is beating pretty much every CPU there is out there by both Intel and AMD, in terms of price to performance ratio that is. 
of course such a 6 core is not keeping up with those 10, 12 or even 16 core SKUs of Intel's very own Alder Lake family when it comes to simple raw performance, video editing, rendering and the like. Nonetheless, the i5-12400F takes home some impressive victories, even manages to take home small wins against AMD's Ryzen 5 5600X in the aspect productivity, a CPU also equipped with the same core and thread count. In a few occasions, AMD does do better though, depending on the scenario of course. The main focus of such a more budget-friendly CPU, however, surely is not put on its raw performance used for getting work done and whatnot. The target audience is hoping for some good gaming performance and as a matter of fact, the 12400F scores big time here, if you're asking me. Not only does Intel with their 12400F make all other CPUs look bad, including their very own ones in terms of price to performance ratio, but in games even significantly more powerful CPUs by the competition AMD are left behind in the dust. On average, the 12400F is delivering measurably better gaming performance than even a Ryzen 9 5900X or 5950X. And AMD does know that, which is why AMD has given us a first taste of their new massive 3D cache approach earlier than expected, as can be witnessed on the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D I've mentioned in the beginning of the video. Unfortunately, due to financial reasons and lack of time, I was forced to refrain from buying that CPU for my tests. After all, the majority of stuff I review is paid for out of my very own pocket. What I want to say is that every single gamer out there can indeed pull the trigger and go with such a potent i5-12400 or even better, the 12400F. The gaming performance is excellent and the frame rate hardly falls short of what can be achieved with those more expensive Intel models. Remember, I have conducted tests with an RTX 3090. With a lower performing GPU, these performance gaps would certainly shrink, which does, of course, also apply to the gap between Intel and AMD processors too. Still, we need to keep in mind that Intel undoubtedly currently is the more cost-effective route. For the i5-12400F, you're shelling out about $160 to $180. Even when going with a Ryzen 5 5600X, we're already landing at $210 to $230. That's noticeably more without actually gaining any real advantages. My statements should not be generalized though, because at the end of the day, it comes down to total platform costs, motherboard and memory included. If you were to go for a more suitable fitting combination of parts, not like I did today, in the end you could end up with a cheaper system as opposed to an AMD platform in this price and performance tier. The power consumption is top notch, although AMD does consume a few watts less. On the flip side, Intel in games does offer more oomph. Such a 12400F with its 6 cores certainly is easily cooled. An AIO liquid cooler is not a necessity here. You definitely could go and use the already included stock cooler instead. 73 degrees Celsius is totally fine and while gaming you're running at much lower temperatures and CPU loads than with Cinebench running anyway. Other than that, the stock cooler is doing okay in terms of noise levels. While it's clearly audible, I wouldn't ever go as far and call it annoying by any means, but everyone will have their own opinion on that, of course. The bottom line is, Intel has unleashed a true price performance beast with that i5-12400F, a beastly nature we could only expect from AMD's Ryzen 5 tier in the past. Without a doubt, AMD won't be waiting too long until they are ready to strike again whenever Zen 4 is ready for launch, but the Intel is preparing for their next CPU launch as well. A truly exciting battle of titans going on here, great for us PC enthusiasts. With that being said, I hope you still found the topic interesting enough, even though I'm so embarrassingly late to cover it. Thank you for watching everyone.